Hey everybody! So what is AWS CloudTrail? In this video, we'll do a short demo of the basics, but first, a little bit of theory. CloudTrail records user activity and API usage on your AWS account. So APIs are really the code that make everything happen in AWS. If I go into the console and I create a new IAM role, that issues an API call and that code creates that role. Or if I terminate an EC2 instance, or even if I log into the AWS console, all of those actions are making API calls on the back end, and CloudTrail tracks that. This service is primarily used for auditing purposes. So say that you're investigating a security incident, for example, and trying to figure out who created a new key pair that was used to log into an EC2 instance. CloudTrail would have logged that activity so you can backtrack and find it. This is automatically enabled on your AWS account. It'll save a history of API calls made through the console, so the things that you do in the browser, or if the calls were made from the command line interface or CLI, or programmatically through the SDKs. And then it also logs things from higher level services like CloudFormation, which will provision and delete AWS resources. You can view CloudTrail activity in the CloudTrail part of the console, which I'll show you in a second, but it also integrates with CloudWatch and S3 if you want to send your logs there instead. And this is actually a requirement if you need to save things longer than 90 days because they're automatically deleted after that. Okay, with that theory out of the way, let's do a demo. I've navigated to CloudTrail in the console, but before we create our first trail, let me just show you what's going on in my account. So expanding the menu over here, let's go to Event History and look at all the stuff that has been going on in my account. I was working in here a little bit earlier. So we've got various events that are being logged here. And for each of these, you'll see the event name, when it happened, so the date time, the user who did it. So this could be an IAM user, or it could be root, it could be other services. You'll see those here. The event source, so the service basically where the event took place, the resource type, and the resource name. So a lot going on. And you'll see up at the top that this is only showing the last 90 days of management events. We'll talk more about those in just a second. But like I mentioned, if you need things longer than that, you'll need to save them to an S3 bucket or to CloudWatch. Okay, so let's go create a trail over here on the left. And create trail. So the idea of a trail is rather than getting all of those events like we just saw, you can set up a trail to filter only to certain events. And you can also say, I want these events to go to CloudWatch or to S3. So let's just set up a trail called My Demo Events. And let's say we do want to save these to an S3 bucket. So we'll just create a new bucket. We'll go with the name here. Scrolling down. By default, your log files will be encrypted. I will just deselect that. We're going to keep things simple. And then you can also do log file validation, which will basically let you check if your log files changed after they were delivered. Again, we're just going to keep things simple and disable that, but that is an option. But then let's go ahead and enable the CloudWatch logs. You might know that CloudWatch can be used to monitor resources like an EC2 instance, things like CPU usage, network in, network out, disk usage and all of that, but it's also a good way to be notified of other things happening in the system. So we'll enable that. We'll just go with the default on the log group name. We will need an IAM role so that CloudTrail has permissions to send things to CloudWatch. We'll just do a new role here. We'll call it my CloudTrail role. I do already have one with that name, so I'm going to do a dash one here. You can use whatever name you want. Go with all of the defaults and everything else and say next. And now we need to specify what type of events we want to record. So management events are the ones that we've been talking about. Things like creating new resources, logging in, that kind of a thing. These are enabled by default and they're free. And then there are three other kinds of events. So data events would be something like reading or writing to an S3 bucket. These do cost extra though as do inside events and network activity events. Inside events basically try to make sense of all the information coming out of CloudTrail to find unusual activity or anomalies. And then network activity events 
These are used to record network activity for services like EC2 or Secrets Manager and so on. We're just going to leave all of these deselected though and just go with the management events. Leave the defaults for everything else and say next. Review, scroll down, and create trail. Okay, so we have a trail. It's currently logging our activity and the output is being stored in an S3 bucket. So let's go take some new action so that there's something to look at in the logs. I'll just open up a new tab here. And we'll create a new EC2 instance. So I'll go to EC2 and launch an instance. I'll just zip through this really quickly. If you need EC2 basics, then check out this video linked above and below. But my demo server will go with Linux, free tier eligible AMI, free tier eligible instance type. I don't need a key pair. We're not going to do anything with this instance, so we're just going to keep it really simple. I'll go with the default security group and then launch the instance. So we just need something to log into CloudTrail so we can go take a look at it. Okay, so it has launched. Let's check out the status here. So still initializing. While that's going though, let's go back to CloudTrail and the logs are being sent to this S3 bucket, which you can just open up by clicking on the link here. Let's see what's going on here, if anything yet. It might take a minute. Okay, so we've got something. There's a folder. Let's just traverse down here. No files yet in the Cloud Trail folder. We'll give it just a minute for that EC2 instance to spin up, and then I'll refresh and we'll see what we get. Okay, our instance has launched. Everything is up and running there. This was launched in US West 2B. And if we come back to our S3 bucket, you'll see that I've got a folder for that. There was also some stuff happening in US East 1. That's got a separate folder. But let's just drill in here and see what we've got. All of these folders are automatically created for you with the dates. And here you'll see that we've got a .gz file. And if we were to click into this and then open up here on the top, you'll see that there's tons of things happening here that are being logged. I do have an option to pretty print, which makes them a little bit easier to read. But this stuff is also being sent to CloudWatch logs because we enabled that earlier. So let's go take a look at it there. That will also be a friendlier version. So CloudWatch, let me just come into a new tab here. We'll navigate there. If you need the basics of CloudWatch, then check out the video linked above and below. But in here, we need to go to logs and then log groups. And you'll see a bunch of different log groups here for the different services. So there should be one for Cloud Trail. Let me just filter down on that. I'll choose the top one here. Now it does take a few minutes for things to show up in CloudWatch. So if you're not finding what you're looking for right away, you might just need to give it a minute or two. But scrolling down, it looks like we've got things coming back. This is today's date, so let me just click into the top one. And lots of information, lots of things being logged here. Let's filter down to instance and see what we get. So here you'll see things like the user identity. I am logged in as root. We've got some filters for describing instance. Let's see what we've got down here. Filter log events. So there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff here. You can do filters. You can create alarms to be alerted if a particular thing happens. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how you would work with Cloud Trail to track user and API activity. And then how you could also use Cloud Watch if you wanted to monitor the health, get alerts and that kind of a thing. So that does it for this video, short and sweet. If you are following along, make sure that you go back and terminate your instance so you don't end up with a surprise bill. Just select the instance, come into instance state, and then delete that. All right, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up on the video and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching.